Oh, I apologize. The uh, the camera shut off for me. I had to. Um, I went to pause it, but it apparently ended the video, so I had to um, had to start another one. But that's okay. Um, picking up where I left off, right, I was talking about the ISUPK, right? You know, they teach that the mark is like a spiritual thing. But then when you ask what that spiritual thing is, they don't really know. But the whole thing with that. Which it was a good conversation, right? The, the guy clearly, you know, got the uppercut on, you know, the captain there. Um, you know, because he brought up the whole Neuralink thing, right, with this guy, Elon Musk, about how they want to, you know, put microchips inside of people. You know, and stuff like that, which for the record, the mark is that chip, right? That microchip that's implanted inside of the hand. That's what the mark is in the Bible. Um, which if you get that, you cannot be saved. Hell, I even know a guy on YouTube, his name is Jared McDane, who he literally, he literally has the Mark of the Beast, the microchip, in his hand, like, like literally right here. He's shown me it on video before, he literally has it in his hand. So again, there's people out there in the world today who actually have the MO. Now, it's not on like a global, worldwide level yet where, you know, almost everybody has it it's not on that level yet but there's thousands of people in the world who do have it today but it's not like mainstream yet but it will be in the future though you know we've been saying this for years you know i remember going back to um what was it going back to like 2016 there was a a company i believe it was in sweden or something called uh, what was it four square marker or something like that and they um they made all of their employees take a microchip implant in the hand or they'd be fired and they would use it to unlock doors on the premise that they work at or, you know, to use the vending machines, you know, and shit like that. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, thousands of videos online of people showing off their microchip implants. You know, they can use it to unlock their home door. They can use it to, you know, of course, purchase items at the store. They can use it to open their car door, you know, things like that. You can very easily find these videos on the Internet. You know, so that's clearly what Apostle John saw. I mean, that's clearly what John saw um, when he wrote that vision down in the Bible. Now, of course, you know, he's not going to use the word RFID chip because that word didn't exist back in that time period. You know, but he had to try to write down what he saw with the vocabulary he had at his time, at his disposable. Actually, let me phrase myself, at his disposal in the time that he lived in. Right, because again, you gotta remember, this was 2,000 years ago, right? You didn't have any type of technology like we have today on the earth. So, you know, when you show people those things, they wouldn't know what they were. So they had to describe them to the best they could with the terms that they had in their own time period. So again, when he described it as a mark in the hand, you know, that should be taken as literal. But, you know, here's what I wanted to mention, bringing up the ISUPK on the, the debate the other day they had. Um, is when they say that it's like a spiritual thing, there's a big problem with this. Because the Bible says that, um, that everybody's going to be given the choice to take the mark. Right? It says he calls us all to take it. Of course, there's going to be a few that refuse. But for the most part, like 95% of the population, if not more, is just going to go along with it. They might at first refuse it and rebel against it. But eventually, once that starvation, you know, comes in or maybe giving them incentives to get it. Just like when this whole Corolla thing started, man. You know, I remember when this whole, these, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, gotta use code language. These, as Mina Shereg would say, these roosters, right? These roosters, read between the lines, right? Or these yabs that people were getting. When they first came out with it, I remember they were paying people like $2,000 to go and get them. You know, and shit like that, where another one they do is they say, okay, well, if you go get it, we'll enter you in to a contest with, you know, 100,000 other people, and you'll be entered to win a million dollars if you go and take this these roosters. Again, read between the lines, because, you know, again, YouTube is anti-freedom of speech, so you got to use code language on this platform. So, again, you know, they could give certain incentives like that, like, you know, go take this chip in your hand. And, um, you know, we'll give you $5,000 just for an incentive to go do it. Again, it makes much logical sense that we've seen an example with it due to this whole Corolla situation. So, again, the problem is, is if the mark is spiritual, well, wait, how are atheists going to take the mark? People who reject the idea of spirituality and God altogether. 
So again, if the mark is not physical but something spiritual, how is a person who is non-spiritual going to take it then? Because the Bible says that all are going to be forced to take it. So there's a, there's a problem there, and they, they can't answer that. Because again, the Bible says that people who don't believe are going to take the mark. Right? People who are just regular average people living in the world are going to take the mark to, in order to buy and trade. So how the hell are atheists going to take a spiritual mark? And, and I asked this to Rock Upon him, right? If you ever watched that debate I did with him in real life three years ago. Because again, he's a seven-day Adventist. Um, you know, so he believes that the mark is like Sunday worship, right? So it's like a spiritual worship on Sunday. So I asked him, it's like, well, shit, man. You know, if, if it really is the Sunday law, well, wait a second. How the hell are atheists going to abide by that because they don't believe in any type of worship because they reject the idea of God altogether. So they don't believe that any person or any God should be, you know, worshipped or, you know, given reference to in any way like that. So how the hell are atheists going to be affected by this spiritual mark? And of course, there's no answer to it. They just be like, oh, next question. But here's the problem, though. If you do a Google search Look up something called the Blue Laws, right? These were laws that existed in the United States. I believe it was like in the late 1900s, right? Late 1900s. You can, again, go on Wikipedia and look up the term the Blue Laws. And you can read about it. And what they were is they were like restrictions, you know, where you couldn't really, you know, go and work and go to certain restaurants and, you know, establishments on Sundays. So wait a second. If the mark is Sunday worship, didn't that already come and go with the blue laws? You know, so again, it's, um, you know, something that they can't answer. You know, they don't have an answer to that question because, well, for one, they probably never even heard of such a fact before. They probably, you know, didn't know that there's, you know, such a thing as the blue laws that actually existed at some point in time. But again, given the fact, the historical fact that these laws did exist in the United States at some point, it throws the idea of, you know, the Sunday worship mark out the window because that already came and went. That idea of, you know, the Sunday holy day of worship that people have to be restricted on. That literally came and went. So either you have to claim the mark came and went already, or you have to agree that it's not talking about anything that has to do with Sunday worship, because it clearly is not. Because again, you got to ask the question, it's like, well, how are people who are non-spiritual, right, people that have no spiritual beliefs, how are they going to be forced to take a spiritual mark if they reject the idea of, you know, God and Satan and, you know, Jesus altogether? So again, that literally makes no sense. But again, you ask people, you know, to look at you like you got nine heads, because, you know, they can't fathom such a simple question like that. You know, so again, man, you know, you got to be careful with some of these groups, man. You know, you got these guys going around everywhere, you know, pushing these false doctrines. I've seen it. There's a dude online, I uh, forget this cat's name, but uh, there's multiple guys saying this, but they, um, they teach that the mark is paper currency, right? Like the, you know, the U.S. dollar, right? Or, you know, rubles or you know, the um, Venezuelan dollar, or, you know, and, and again, any paper currency, right? Um, but I'm just using American dollar as an example, right? So they'll sit there and claim that the U.S. dollar is, um, you know, the mark, because it, then they'll say, well, it's, you use it to pay for things, and it's in your hand, and you can't buy or trade without using the, you know, the global currency. It's like, well, wait a second, there's problems. I mean, you can still barter and trade with people without using the currency. I've done that multiple times before. But even going off of the scripture in question, paper currency doesn't fit it. Because, again, it says a mark in the hand, like inside of. Paper money is not inside of the hand. You know, so, again, that's just a, a very simple cut. But then a whole other thing I find funny is these guys saying this, you look at their channel and here it is, they're driving around in fancy cars, you know, drinking, you know, nice sports drinks and, you know, and shit like that. And I think to myself, let's put this a second, wait a second. So if paper money is the mark, don't you have it too? Because you're, you know, obviously you bought that drink that you're drinking, you paid for that vehicle you're driving in. It's like, 
Oh, and then the roof over your head, you got to pay cash for that too, right? You got to use American currency or say if you live somewhere else in the world, you got to use that currency to, um, to pay for those things, right? So wait a second, don't you have it too? If you're going to claim that, you know, say for example, you know, ETT or Bible Defender or, you know, J Sacramento Truth Movement, if we all have the mark because we use American currency to buy our daily goods, well, wait, then you have it too because you literally use currency to pay for your goods. Then you ask them, it's like, oh, next question. Because they're, they're cut on that. They're cut. And here's the other thing. You know, which again, this whole idea, you know, with the market of beast, there's literally a thousand or a million different beliefs out there that people have, you know, regarding this topic. You know, anywhere from, you know, people say that John 3.16 is the mark, you know, Christianity is the mark. The picture of white Jesus it has to do with the mark or the image of the beast. You know, um, again, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Oh, there, there was some dumbass out there saying that the Bible itself is the mark. It's like, wait a second, what the hell? How the hell could the Bible itself be the mark if you learn about the mark in the Bible? So wait, why would you trust the Bible then if the Bible is the mark itself? But the place we're warned about the mark is the Bible itself. So I mean, that's a self-contradiction. So again, it just, you know, boggles the mind, you know, how, um, how foolish some people can be sometimes. You know, but these are the characters that we're dealing with. You know, and as far as the image of the beast, right, Revelation 13th chapter, right, dealing with the, you know, the beast and his image, the image of the beast, the, <laughs> the beast, the beast, excuse me, the image of the beast is talking about, like, this man-fool system, as Elder Apostle Tahar would say, right, just like when he was out in, a, in New York when, what's his cat, Brother Polite pulled up on him, right, Tahar told him, Polite, you know, you see, man, you were raised in this man-fool system. So that's how you think, right? That's how you think. That's what he told them. So, yeah, the, the, this man-fool system, the way that the political structure is set up, you know, when you read the chapter, it says, they made an image to the first beast, which had the wound by the sword and didn't live. And he had power. And, again, I'm nearly paraphrasing off the top of the head. But he had power to make an image to the first beast before him that had a wound by a sword and did live. And he caused everybody to worship the first beast that was before him. And anybody that would not would be killed. Now, we see this going on today. You Say, for example, um, you know, with America, right? America's ideologies and ways of life, these are pushed upon all the nations of the world. That's why when you jump ahead to Revelation 17th chapter, it speaks about, you know, that woman, right, the harlot, who made the earth drunk off of her fornication. That's talking about the United States and the, the, uh, the women's of the United States. And the fornication is talking about the American philosophy and American way of life. That's why, you know, in foreign countries such as, um, say, for example, uh, if you go over to some developing countries, right, some third world countries, they openly accept homosexuality out there, or as I call them, rainbows, right? They openly accept that now, whereas maybe 20, 30 years ago, that was, you know, unacceptable. They wouldn't accept that there. But now, slowly over the years, They've adopted the idea because America uh, was um, the one who accepted that, right? America was the one who pushed that ideology upon the world heavily. Now, of course, some might say, well, yeah, you know, what people were doing it beforehand, say in Africa before America, you know, pushed that nation to legalize it. It's like, yeah, well, sure, of course, some people here or there were doing that. But they're heavily doing it even more so now due to America influencing that nation to change its stance on it. Again, it's very simple. You know, or another thing, right? You know, there's some places where, you know, polygamy was openly established, but then when America brought its, um, you know, feminism idea over where women have rights, right? Women can be superior to men, they don't need a man. With that whole idea being brought about, now women in those countries where they didn't have a, a right or a choice, now they are given a choice. So polygamy went out the window with that, right? Your wife can get up and leave you, right? Leave your ass and take half of what you own. <laughs> Hell, at least that's what's going on over here, man. You know, there's some sad stories about that, man. You know, a man might be in a relationship with a woman, you know, that might have a children, you know, child or children together. And, you know, a few years down the line, you know, the, uh, the woman decides to leave the man and take the children. So, 
the the courts rule in her favor, right? A, the man has to pay her child support every month, and she gets to take half of what he owns. You know, so again, that's how unjust this country is. You know, but again, that's just what it is. So again, all these nations in the world, they're as the Bible says, they're becoming drunk off of the wine of America's fornication. Right? It's again, it's not like a literal, literal drunk, like drinking physical, you know, wine. But it's like a, you know, metaphoric, allegorical saying, right? That they're following the philosophy of this country. So they're destroying their own cultures by, you know, adding American ideologies and, you know, um, what's what I'm looking for? Um, values, I'll say, right? You know, so another good example, Saudi Arabia, over in Saudi Arabia, you know, say back in like 2017 and third or one for that point, you know, women were not, you know, allowed to operate vehicles. They were restricted from that, restricted from driving, right? But here it is now in 2023 due to America, you know, pushing this feminism on that country. Now women have the right to drive vehicles in Saudi Arabia, whereas before they did not. But now due to America, they do. So again, that's just a handful of examples of um, the American ideology and view being pushed upon all the other nations. So again, the image of the beast is talking about the uh, the man-fool system that we live in, right? The, the political structure, like going back to when it says they made an image to the first beast before them. They had a womb by a sword, but he did live. That's talking about the Roman Empire, right? The, the city of Rome, it was a great empire, then it declined. But it's symbolically back again today as America. That's why, and there's plenty of examples of this, um, such as if you look at some of the, um, the structures in ancient Rome, right? Some like you know the temples and you know the governmental buildings. They are literally the same as the United States are. Like say for an example, look at the Capitol buildings of America. Look at the governmental structures, right? The pillars they have. That's from Rome, or the eagle, right? The eagle. That was Rome's image. But that's now America's image, or the political. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Political structure. The political structure of America. You have the Democrats and the Republicans. In Rome, you had the Flavians and the Patricians. So again, it's literally America is modern day Rome, right? So that's what the Bible meant when it says, you know, they made an image to the first beast before, which had a wound by a sword, but he did live, right? So Rome was there. Rome collapsed. But it's symbolically back again today as America. You know, it's very simple to understand. You know, so again, that's a simple breakdown as to what it's talking about. You know, people try to make this into, you know, some type of Hollywood movie where it isn't. We got dumbass out there talking about, you know, will, you know, there's like one man antichrist that's going to come in the future and make everybody worship him. And they're going to make a statue that everybody has to worship or you'll be killed. No, nah, that's not what the Bible is talking about. But again, it just shows you, man, that a lot of people are just misled and don't know what they're talking about. You know, that's why you got to be careful with who you interact with on here, man. You know, because Christ warned, you know, many false teachers went out into the world. You know, and how do you tell what is a true teacher and one that's a false teacher? Is you got to tell by their works. You know, one that, that's teaching you to, um, you know, just live by your heart. Right, you know, oh, Jesus died for you. Just repeat that sinner's prayer when you're seven years old. And you'll be saved the rest of your life. Again, that's what the Christian church is. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them teach that. Which is clearly against the Bible. Ironically enough, that is anti-Christ. Right? And so the word anti means to be against, right? So anti-Christ means you're against Christ. Right? So the Christian church, by vast majority, the churches are anti-Christ. They are against the teachings of Christ in the Bible. You no, know, because the church will say, don't follow the law. But then Jesus, who they call Jesus, a.k.a. Yahawashai, you know, he said to follow the law. You know, and they'll fight, you know, tooth and nail to um, defend that doctrine they have, right? They'll fight you, you know, tooth and nail to try to say, you know, well, we're saved by grace. It's not of works, it's of grace. Why they have a misconception of that? Because what the Bible's saying when it says it's of grace and not of your works it's talking about you have people in the world who just believe that by doing good works, that's going to save them. Like, like, say for an example, right? If you go up to the average person who claims to believe in God and you ask them, do you believe there's a heaven or a hell? They'll be like, oh, yeah, I believe, you know, there's a heaven or a hell. You know, if you're a good person, 
as in, you know, you don't steal, you don't, you know, murder, you don't, you know, do any of those type of things in your life, you'll die and go to heaven. Whereas if you murder people, you steal, you know, rob, murder, things like that, you'll um, go to hell when you die. So again, that's like a worldwide belief that most people have that, you know, depending on how you do in life, your deeds, that will um, determine where you go when you die. That's like a worldwide belief among many different cultures and religions. They might refer to it as different names, but it's like a very worldwide belief that, you know, that is. So again, what, when the Bible says it's not of your works, but it's grace, it's talking about those people who believe that just by doing good works is enough to save them, which is clearly not true. The Bible says you have to have works and faith. That's what Christ taught. Right? The Bible says, you know, faith without works is dead. But just by doing good works alone without believing is not going to save you. Again, you could do all the works in the world, but if you reject Christ, then you're not going to be saved. It's very simple, man. Like, say for an example, there might be a wealthy man out there who might give out large amounts of money to the needy. What he's doing is a Christ-like act, but if he rejects Christ altogether, then that's going to be in vain, because that's not going to save him at the end of the day. That's why the Bible says, what is that? John the third chapter, right? He that believes not, he's already condemned, right? So if you don't believe in the Christ, then you're already condemned. It's very simple. And there's no if, ands, or buts. You know, so again, it's it's very easy to understand what the Bible means when it says you're saved by grace and not of works. This is very simple to understand. Saying that we're saved by grace, right? The grace that, you know, Christ went and died for you on the cross. But how do you achieve that grace? You got to accept that. And you have to live your lifestyle after how Christ set for you to live. The Bible also says, and this is a cut on, you know, the preacher and the, all these antinomianisms. A antinomians, you know, in the comic boards and shit. Um, Hebrews 10.26, if we continue to sin after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for our sins. So again, that's a cut on guys saying, you know, just believe in Christ and you can do whatever you want. It's clearly not what Christ taught. Um, but anyway, I hope that video was edifying and I'm going to say shalom.